during the 80s, our task was to develop or f all the pieces necessary for the complete GNU system, which we couldn't find already available. Of course, we were constantly looking around for free programs that were available already because that could reduce the size of the job we had to do before we had a running system. People were saying, this is a nice idea, but it's such a big job, we don't think you could ever finish it. Well, I had hoped we could finish it, but they were right, it was a big job. So we could not afford the attitude of not invented here. We had to be willing to use any existing program that was free and more or less adequate for the job. Thus, for instance, I decided to use the X window system. It wasn't exactly what I would have preferred, but it was free software and it was adequate. We also found some other programs that we could use, but that still left lots of pieces that nobody else developed. We had to develop them or recruit someone to develop them. In October 1985, we started the Free Software Foundation, figuring that the popularity of GNU Emacs would show people that the GNU project really could produce useful software, that it was not just talk, then maybe they'd be willing to give some money. So we started a tax-exempt organization. People in the US could take a tax deduction if they gave. In order to raise money to promote free software and specifically to develop parts of GNU. And at that point, the foundation took over from me the business of selling copies of GNU Emacs. And the orders increased and increased. And for quite a number of years, the foundation was bringing in a substantial amount of money from that. And we got to the point where we had several programmers working full time. And they developed some important parts of the system, including, for example, the command interpreter, the shell, that you normally type at if you're using a command line interface, and the C library, which is the interface between all of user mode programs and the kernel. These were both components written by staff of the Free Software Foundation. We also hired, in some cases, technical writers to produce manuals. But most of the software was developed by volunteers. And there were many, many volunteers. There were even some full-time volunteers. I'm a full-time volunteer for the foundation because it does not pay me. You see, when the foundation first had enough money to hire one person, I, as the president, had to decide how to spend it. In particular, I had to decide whether the foundation should pay me a salary, pay Stallman a salary, or hire a different person. But it was my responsibility to spend the money in the most effective way possible. And I realized that paying Stallman a salary would be like throwing the money away because we could get Stallman to work for nothing. So it was therefore obviously my duty to hire another person instead. And this rule continues to this day. The foundation does not pay me a salary. I'm a full-time volunteer. This is important because I'm asking you to volunteer. And in order to ask you to do it, I have to do it. I'm only asking you to do the same thing that I've been doing for many years. There are other full-time volunteers as well, but most of them are getting paid by somebody to do it. They're not getting paid by us, so from our point of view, they're volunteers. But in fact, that's how they make their living. There are also, of course, by now, many thousands of part-time volunteers who donate their time and are not paid for it at all. The interesting thing that we have shown in the free software community is that the, you don't have to assume that developing software requires money. Well, if you want a certain program to be written this month, very likely you do have to pay to get someone to do that. But what we've shown is that people who are not getting paid will produce a broad spectrum of useful software that together can do a lot of things. So when we think about how society gets its software, it's a mistake to assume that this always has to be based on money. People used to say to me, 
<clears throat> if the software is free, then nobody can be paid to work on it, so nobody will work on it. Clearly, they were being confused about the two different meanings of the word free. But never mind that, they were still making the assumption that there was no possible motive for anyone to develop software, whether it's free software or not, except money. So let's compare their theory with observed fact. Today, there are around a million people contributing to free software. So let's look around and see what kind of motives these people actually have. Human nature, of course, is very complex. One person can have multiple motives for a single act at the same time. So some of the motives that I have encountered for developing free software include political idealism, trying to make the world a better place, to fight for freedom. That's one. Another is fun. Programming is tremendous fun. I sure wish, even though I'm glad I'm doing the work I do today, which is promoting the philosophy of free software, that's what's most needed, I often miss programming because programming is so much fun. It's so much fun, in fact, that many people who have full-time jobs programming like to work on free software in their spare time because that way they're working on whatever project they choose in the way they choose and that makes it more fun. Of course, not everybody feels this way, but a lot of the best programmers find programming fun and those are the people whose help we want most in the area of programming. Another motive is to be appreciated. If your free program is used by 1% of our community, that's hundreds of thousands of users. That's a lot of people who are grateful to you. It feels really good. Another motive is to have a professional reputation. Hundreds of thousands of people using your free program and saying it's good is something you can show to an employer and say, see, I'm a good programmer. You don't even have to go to school. The FSF once hired somebody who was around 17 years old just after he graduated from high school because he was such a good programmer. He'd already been volunteering for us for a few years. <clears throat> I didn't care if he had a college degree. I just cared if he could do good work. Another motive is feeling gratitude. If you have been using our community software for years and appreciating how good it is, how much it has helped you use computers, then when you write a, a useful program, that is your opportunity to give something back, or we might say to pay it forward, because you're not, you're not giving a compensation to the specific developers of the programs you use, but you're adding to what our community gives to others. So you're paying it forward instead of paying it back. <clears throat> but it still is a way you can return something to the community so it responds to a feeling of gratitude. Another motive is hatred for Microsoft. I think that's a rather shallow motive, but factually speaking, it exists. It's shallow because it's a mistake to focus too much on any one company as the problem we're trying to solve. Yes, Microsoft is a part of the problem. So is Adobe, so is Oracle, and many other companies contribute to the problem as well. The problem we're trying to solve is non-free software. Microsoft has subjugated more users than anybody else. But that's not because the others aren't trying. They just haven't managed to subjugate as many users as Microsoft has. So they're not really better. The danger is if you focus on Microsoft alone, if you start thinking that the problem is Microsoft, you have now fallen into the confusion of forgetting that the others are also part of the problem. And you start thinking that anybody who competes with Microsoft is good, that anything that reduces Microsoft's success is good, and that includes some non-free software. So it's actually bad. Just because it's competing with Microsoft doesn't mean it's treating our freedom with respect. 
So we shouldn't be distracted from the issue of freedom in our community.